Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Sober Bartender Podcast, the show where we recover from life. I'm your host, Brandy Kelly. So today is the day after my birthday. So yesterday I turned 39 years old. Age is such an interesting thing. Um, I work with a dear friend that's approaching 30 and to hear her view of what impending doom surrounds 30 is really interesting to me because um, just now at 39, I'm realizing that I still don't even have a small portion of life figured out and that that's totally okay. And I'm glad (laughs) that I don't have it all figured out and that I don't have to. And I think that is one of the benefits of just being where I'm at, right? Being being in today, being in the moment. Um, my 20s were absolutely for the lessons. They were for, I mean, I partied it up and I traveled and I explored. Um, and there were lessons, but I don't. I don't know that I learned them, but I experienced them. And then my 30s, my 30s, I really got to know more of myself. I got to know more of what I don't like. There was a lot of contrast. So those things that we experience in our life that we don't necessarily like or want to experience, I feel like our 30s kind of shine the light on those things. And they also showed me what I do like and what I'm passionate about and what I require to be happy and comfortable and um, and to feel good. So I wanna talk a little bit about feelings. Um, I always tell people feeling is healing and it's such a fun, easy little thing to say, feeling is healing. But what does that actually mean? So I I can tell you what it means to me. To me, it means that when feelings show up, they're gonna they're gonna show up like it. We don't we're not here to just be happy all the time. We're not here to just be angry, but it's not bad to feel anger. It's not bad to be afraid. It's not bad to be sad. So that's the whole, it's okay to not be okay. And that's more of being right where you're at, right? So um, I've had some some interesting challenges show up in the past couple weeks. And I've been fighting my feelings, fighting the feeling of being afraid fighting the feeling of being sad um, because in my mind I need to be positive and I need to shine the positive light and I need to, you know, I need to envision the outcome that I want as opposed to playing the what if game because my what if game never goes in the positive when I'm fearful. So I've taken time this this past week to just actually feel and just let feelings wash over me. But another fun thing that I like to say to myself and to anyone that is willing to listen is feelings aren't facts. So while our feelings are valid and they are real and absolutely need and deserve to be felt just because we feel something doesn't make it a fact i feel like he's going to be mad at me well that's a feeling but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be so it's okay for me to feel that if that's how i choose to feel it's okay But the fact is that I'm fearful of the unknown. I'm fearful of some thing that is outside of my 
immediate reality, right? Um, so that being said, how do I want to word this? Our feelings are an emotional reaction to some some kind of learned they're like a, a learned response like they're based on something that has happened to us in the past we associate it with with something with some kind of uh, wound or some kind of trauma some kind of um abandonment sometime that where something ha similar happened and it left us feeling a certain kind of way so when we experience that again we go to that same fearful um pained place And I believe a part of my work is to just not continue to, to go there. And I talk a lot about us having a choice. And I am able to recognize that choice, like that muscle is getting stronger. And these things that are happening that are outside of my control, these things that I'm afraid of, I can choose whether to feed into that fear or whether I can choose to stay present. So I was watching, um, I was watching this guy's reels on Instagram and it was kind of a little mini meditation prompt to where he said, close your eyes. And imagine that your life before this moment didn't exist. Imagine that your life is this, this moment and every moment after this. So if you take away what experiences you've had and what you think you know about yourself and who you think that you are, if you take that away and you're just right now, this is who you actually are, who you are in this moment, in this chair. It's not what you've done and it's not where you've been and it's not who you've known or who you've loved, but who you are in this moment. So I can tell you that in this moment, I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling peaceful. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling excited. Um, I'm feeling inspired. I feel loved. I feel supported and guided. You know that song what is it called? There's a song by Bruno Mars. I'm going to Google it because I need to know now. There's a song by Bruno Mars. And I think it's called Just the, yeah, Just the Way You Are. And when I hear that song, I kind of, I think of it like I'm singing it to myself. So just some of the lyrics. Her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining. Her hair falls perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful. And I tell her every day. I know when I compliment her, she won't believe me. It's so sad to think that she don't see what I see. And every time she asks, do I look okay? I say, when I see your face, there's not a thing I would change because you're amazing just the way you are. And when you smile, the world stops and stares for a while because girl, you're amazing just the way you are. And it sounds silly, like I'm getting emotional, but you know, I spent so much time not 
okay with where I'm at right now. And so just always needing to strive to be better and strive to be more. And, you know, there's like one side of me is just bombarded with this. You've got to hustle and you're not going to get where you're going if you don't push and grind. And then there's the other side that just tells me like, you're already there. You've already arrived. Like you're, you're already right where you're supposed to be, but you're still alive. So, you know, I continue to put one foot in front of the other, but it's just, I'm in this season of accepting that where I'm at is absolutely enough. It's absolutely okay. And being me is a good thing. And loving me is a good thing. And it's not selfish and self-centered and I'm not conceited and I'm not a narcissist to cheer for myself and believe in myself like I believe in other people. And I look at my marriage that I cherish and I love and I ask myself like, how different would this be if I constantly ask this man to make up for the parts of me that I'm not willing to love. Like if I was needing him to fix me, if I wasn't willing to work on me and I relied on, on our relationship, on his love to pour love into those places where I felt I wasn't enough because that's been my experience in the past where any partner I had, the things that I didn't feel good, I would use their body language, their cues, their treatment of me to determine my own worth and my own value. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago, it wasn't until, you know, I, I stopped drinking for me. That I had to realize that I deserved it for me. Like it wasn't because other people thought that I was doing too much or other people thought that I wasn't enough. I had to get real with myself and ask myself, like, what am I willing to do to be the person that I want to be, to like the person I see in the mirror? And so in my marriage, I take care of me and then I'm able to take care of my husband. And I know that he takes care of him and then he's able to take care of me. And so we come to each other as these individuals, as opposed to these people with holes that need to be filled. So who who would you be in your relationships if you loved the parts of you that you're expecting other people to fill? Like, who would you be if you filled those own, like your own, <laughs> if you filled your own holes with all the love and acceptance? Because once once I filled those parts of me that felt wounded and injured, then I was able to radiate that love and share that love. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's a process, but it's a process worth partaking in. It's a, it's a journey worth journeying. Um, I feel like when we engage in self-destructive behavior or avoidant behavior, um, I don't think that we're failing, but I think it's worth recognizing that the behavior is going on and then looking at where, where you can find in yourself, like, 
can you see where you deserve better? Like, as opposed to looking at the people around you and going, I should do better for them because there's some kind of societal expectation that you should have so much money or you should do, you know, have a clean house or you should X, Y, Z, but looking at yourself and going, I don't even like what I'm doing. I don't like how much time I'm spending on my phone. I don't like how often I'm going to the bar. I don't like that I'm constantly binging on sugar. I don't like that I'm, you know, blowing all my money, you know, binge shopping or gambling or, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I don't like where I'm dishonest, whatever that behavior is that you don't like in yourself of recognizing that and then going, okay, I did this, but that means that I can also choose to not do this. And once you recognize that you're not doing the thing because you're a victim of your circumstances, but because it is a choice that you've made and maybe you've developed some kind of addiction or some compulsion, um, but regardless, you made the choice to begin, you also can make the choice to change that behavior. And that starts with your thoughts and your feelings. And a lot of it starts with your relationship with yourself. So recognizing, I mean, our feelings are a compass. They're not a fact, but they are a guide. Like your feelings let you know where you're at with something. They let you know what you want, what you don't want. They let you know where something hurts. But I've learned that, like, I just, I looked outside of myself for so long for validation, for reassurance, for enabling, for, you know, for all of these things. But I had to go within and find those things within. I had to, I had to find the, the parts of me that could forgive me for the choices that I made and accept that I did, I did my best with the information I had. I did my best with where I was at in those moments and at, in those periods of my life. And I've said many times, sometimes my best really sucked. But, but it led me to where I'm at. I have new information. I have new understanding. And I just wanted to do a little short video. It's summer. Um, it's hot here. It's hot and it's muggy. And I'm busy. And I'm sure y'all are busy too. I'm not a mom, but I know moms and their whole schedule, their whole life changes in summer because the kids aren't in school and they've got vacations and, you know, sports are done or it's different sports or, you know, just trying to keep the family occupied. So I decided that our sober summer series would be a little shorter, um, But those are just some things that I that I felt were worth sharing. Um, feelings are not facts. Feelings are valid. All of your feelings are valid. Your feelings deserve to be felt. Any kind of discomfort or feeling that shows up, if you push it away, if you push against it, if you swim against that river, if you caught last week's episode, um, I talked about that that uncomfortable feeling of pushing against what is when your feelings show up picture them like they're knocking at the door they're knocking and they're knocking and they're knocking and you think i'll get to it when i have the energy or i'll get to it when i have time but if you open the door and you let them in knowing that they're just a visitor they're just a guest they're not a resident this too shall pass. They're not going to be forever. That's the feeling is healing. You feel those feelings and maybe have a conversation with them. Maybe question them. Why are you here? 
What do you need? What are you showing me? And that gives you an opportunity to, to grow. And in my case, it's, it's what part of me needs love, what needs to be addressed. Um, Feeling is healing. Nothing lasts forever. This thing that is big and scary and uncomfortable could feel really, really heavy today and tomorrow could feel like a feather. Um, but we don't know which tomorrow the feather is in. We don't know when the, the load lightens. So we just have to keep going in times of heavy, heavy weight. So I hope that y'all are having a great summer. Oh, if you, I feel so much birthday love, so much energy sent my way. And I'm a celebrator of birthdays. I celebrate every day. So the day of my birth, I celebrate big. Um, and I spent it, I did work. I worked outside in the sunshine. I worked a brunch shift. I got my butt kicked. Um, but it felt good. It it makes me feel alive to feel that pressure and that adrenaline and that hustle. Um, I went to a restaurant, I took my husband to an Indian restaurant. Indian is our favorite and we just got a new restaurant in Corpus Christi, and it was phenomenal. So for my local friends, it's called Persis. And it everything was everything was good. We were gonna go to the beach, and I just didn't have the energy after that long shift. So we came home and put on one of our favorite shows and played a game. Because that is one of my favorite things. Part of, you know, I I don't know exactly what my love language is because it sometimes feel like they're all my love language, um, but quality time, um, actually just sitting one-on-one, -on -one, not just watching TV, but engaging in something together. Um, that's really important to me. And it, it feels good to feel connected in that way for me. So that felt like the best birthday ever. So I'm sending y'all love. I feel absolutely blessed. I feel so, so, so loved. So just, I urge you to do, do some, do some love on yourself. Just instead of the criticizing and instead of the critiquing and instead of the shoulds, like I should be loving myself, but just when that negative thought pops up in your head when you're trying on a swimsuit or not wanting to go somewhere, not wanting to wear something because of your, you know, your fear or your discomfort of other people's opinions, I say wear what feels good, what you feel good in. And I say talk good to yourself. Like when you hear those songs and you think of that person you love, include yourself in that too. Think of yourself as someone you love. And the road to self-love is not easy. You cannot snap your fingers and it's not one day, it's a practice. And it ebbs and flows. I cannot say that every single day I can look at myself like that, but I'm allowing myself to. I'm allowing myself to see myself as the good person that that other people see in me and that I feel in me but haven't allowed myself to acknowledge. So whatever you're struggling with, whether it's relationships, whether it's your relationship with yourself, whether it's sobriety, whether it's finances, whatever it is, I see you. I feel you. 
and it's it's okay it's okay to sit down and let those fears in let those struggles in and then question them you know ask is there another way that i can look at this is there another way that i can approach this is there another way i can experience this This too shall pass. You're doing great. Especially when you don't feel like it. I promise you're doing great. You're getting where you're going. And right where you are is enough. If you're breathing, if you're listening to this podcast, this is enough for right now in this moment. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week. I love you guys. I will talk to you next Wednesday.